Well, hello. We're at the World Retail Congress in Madrid, and we're extremely fortunate to have a uh, retail star, almost retail veteran, almost retail legend, Andrew Jennings, who just uh, uh, issued his book called Almost is Not Good Enough, How to Win or Lose in Retail. And we're going to talk a little bit about him. Uh, welcome, Andrew. Thank you very much. It's very nice to see you again, especially in this great environment where we have retailers from all around the world exchanging ideas. Tell us a little bit what led you to write this book, sort of, you know, almost is not good enough, and, and the title. Well, basically, um, for the last, it's been sort of in works for about four years now, and I, in having been in the industry for 40 odd years, I decided I picked up a lot of good information. I'd had a lot of um, lessons of wins for myself and things that weren't so successful uh, that I'd learned lessons on. I'd also um, learned a lot of lessons from other retailers, uh, gained successes and failures, and I thought it would be really good to put something together. In addition to this, I was rather excited um, by the sort of opportunity of involving and making some money for the Prince's Trust and I'm chairman of the Princess Trust Leadership and Leisure uh, Board and um, we've got a big focus um, on this charity and every um, dollar that we make or pound that we make or euro that we make goes um, towards the charity. I think that's a very important point to make indeed that all the proceeds from this book will go, will go to that charity and I think that's a, you know, a great legacy I think that you're leaving behind. Now tell us a little bit. You've worked in food retail, non-food retail across a number of geographies. You know, Harrods. You know, House of Fraser's, Kastad in Germany, um, South Africa as well. So, so tell us a little bit. What are I mean? The book, of course, and is of about. Of course, Ireland. Don't forget uh, Ireland. Exa Ireland, well. exactly. And and Canada. <laughs> yes, to be to be complete. And the book, of course, is close to 300 pages. Uh, but what are in about 11 or 12 chapters? So there's a lot of actually very interesting learning and insights. But yep. what would be your sort of a key learning sort of if, you, if I'm with you in an elevator for 45 sec seconds what would you tell me are the key learnings of this 40 years of, of in retail? Stay relevant to your customer. The retail graveyard as I like to call it is full of once great brands um, that became irrelevant and why did they become irrelevant because number one they didn't focus on who their current and future customer would be secondly they didn't they didn't innovate with excellence and innovation today means technology and it also means that you've really got to be an omni-channel player. Thirdly, um, staff are key and really getting talent in the business and I often talk about um, really sort of um, hungry, um, motivated staff who are passionate about what they do because passionate people, I'd much rather employ somebody who is passionate and less qualified than overqualified and without the excitement in them. And the last, of course, is we're retailers. And it's all about merchandise. And I spent a couple of days here at the conference, and sadly, I haven't heard as much about merchandise as I would like to, because that's the lifeblood. And I often say that the, um, the lifeblood of any retail business is the, the merchandise in it. And so getting those the assortment things, right. Getting it right. You know, you see businesses failing. A couple of weeks ago, we had we heard in the UK um, that Toys R Us had gone under, Maplins had gone under, that um, the mother care business is sort of teetering on the edge. House of Fraser business is not doing well at all. And you've got to ask yourself, did they have the customer at the heart of their organisation? You talked about a customer that in the beginning of your career said the customer is king, which is a key phrase in you know, marketing and sales, uh, but evolvingly now you talk a little bit more about the customer being a super being. The tell super us, being. Tell us a little bit about the all it. all-knowing, the fully understanding person who has, uh, because they know more about the product, the value for money, the competitive pricing, the structure of the item that's being bought, than the retailer does quite often, at the touch of a button. You, know, you go onto Google and you can see exactly what's happening um, with a specific product or price or whatever it might be. 
You talked about the retail graveyard, uh, but that's you know where you have an example of quite a lot of example of companies who were on the losing hand. Uh, but today, and you know, you have a number of companies who obviously get it right in terms of getting the customer sure. being this and addressing this yeah. super being customer. Yep. Tell us about the winners and, and, and what the and, and how and what did they get right? Okay, if I look at Primark, I love the business, and here in Madrid, they've taken over an old department store, and they've made a phenomenal job. It's an experience. It's a differentiated uh, business, and. If I look um, at Uniglo, again, owned by Fast Retail, unbelievably well focused, edited assortments and the right fashion colors. They know who their customer is. If I look at a business like IKEA, I think those guys are genius at what they do. They know how to get their customer moving through their stores, passing every single product in their stores and telling a story and also having eateries in the store. If we go to London, my, one of my favorite department stores in the world is Selfridges. They do an unbelievable job and they are focused on who the customer is and their customer may be nine years old or they may be 90 years old, but they accommodate every single customer that they have going into their store. And their assortments have got so much more exciting. And you can go in and you can eat in an e you can go in an eatery. They used to have a I'm not sure if they still do a movie house in there. They've got a rooftop restaurant that changes theme every six months. So it's all how to make the store relevant and the very much the experiential Barbara can here, I think, from, from Ward and I think made you know, a couple of interesting Fair. comments and getting the number of things right, including the experiential. On the other hand, here at this uh, conference here in Madrid, we got quite a significant presence from Chinese players with JD.com, yes. you know, Alibaba. Yes. They're all coming to, you know, come and, and uh, invade Europe, if we can call it that way. Uh, they're making huge offering to bring a lot of, you know, products to, to China. We talk about the platformization uh, of retail. What do you make out of that? Well, how will the retail scene uh, look like five or ten years down the road with these major groups? I'm, you know, Amazon, of course, uh, coming from America, but the Chinese groups. Yeah, how can you still be relevant when a lot of these things are going to be sold through platforms? But everything is in proportion. The reality is worldwide um, e-commerce is 12 or 13 percent. That's all of um, worldwide sales. So we've got to keep everything in proportion. I gave an example this afternoon at um, the, the talk, the panel that I was on um, about my book almost is not good enough about um, the Chinese Alibaba business. In one day, in singles day, uh, they took $23 billion in one day. Um, over a weekend in New York in November, Thanksgiving weekend, in all of America, they only took $13 billion. I mean, that's incredible, just as an example. Amazon. Um, these guys are incredible. However, they're only going, they're going to pick up a lot of business. They're going to eat off the table of other retailers and are not getting it right. Some customers love um, Amazon and they seem to sell more and more general merchandise and uh, getting into fashion business now. They're going to take market share. However, there is still place for people who want to innovate, who want to focus on their customers, who give an exciting experience and Amazon themselves are getting into bricks and mortar. And you know, we've, we saw the Whole Foods business that they've acquired and other businesses that they are acquiring. And I think the key things is of course remain and stay relevant and that is very important. Andrew, thank you very much. If you want to know more, Almost is Not Good Enough, you know, How to Win or Lose in Retail, published at the Prince's Trust. Andrew, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Very nice to see you. Thank you.